Welcome to Become an Idol. I'm Dr. Robin Sargent, owner of Idol Courses. This is the place where newbies come to learn and veterans share their knowledge. I have here with me today, Veronica Reed, and I came to know Veronica because she is a member of the fourth cohort in the Idol Courses Academy, and I wanted to bring Veronica on just to share her success story with you um, and so that she can share like what she did and how she did it and how she um, landed her first Idol job. So Veronica, will you please introduce yourself uh, better than I just did? All right. Hello. My name is Veronica Reed, and most of my career has been in human resources, but more on the employee relations side, kind of generalist business partner background. And I realized that I really enjoy kind of the learning portion and kind of the training and development side of human resources, as opposed to being kind of the HR police and always dealing with all of the drama that comes with um, adults working together in the workplace. And so I kind of started dibbling in learning and development and kind of figuring out what that was. I um, volunteered with my local ATD chapter, which is the Dallas chapter, and started kind of connecting with people and understanding what instructional design was. And I had an unexpected layoff, so I had a little bit more time than I anticipated to really kind of start getting my portfolio together. But I realized I didn't have all of the tools that I needed. And so I saw Dr. Robin pop up on LinkedIn and she had her idol courses. And so I just kind of did a little bit more digging and realized that this was the resource that I needed to kind of bring everything together, um, provide additional resources for me. And so I was able to revamp my portfolio and really understand like the true instructional design process what it looks like in different you know, areas and really kind of hone in on those skills. And so thanks to the Academy, I was able to um, land that idol job. So, Well, I mean, yes to the Academy, but really, I mean, you're the one who did all the work. So we, we have to start um, at the beginning. How long were you considering moving into instructional design? Like what's your, what was the beginning of that journey? Has it been a year? Has it been just a couple months? What was it? It's probably probably been about two or three years. I knew that I wanted to move kind of to the talent development sort of space in, in human resources. I wasn't really familiar with learning and development um, because typically at organizations, they're all kind of grouped into one area. So you don't really see the different pieces of that. And so really, once I got involved with Association of Talent Development, I realized that there's more to talent development. There's, you know, learning and development. So that's when I started gravitating towards instructional design. But um, I was just comfortable. I was kind of scared to take that next step. Um, So when I had that um, unexpected job transition, it kind of forced me into really looking at that. So that was probably a, a year ago. It was this time last year. When I was like, okay, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason. So, you know, you have this time, you should really start focusing on, you know, what's next for you and really develop those skills. So probably seriously about a year ago is when I made the decision to go ahead and really get serious about learning and development and really pursuing instructional design. And what did you do before the academy since you knew that you had a goal, what kind of actions did you take before the academy to try and make that transition? I was just doing general research. Um, I started following more instructional designers on LinkedIn. And so I saw that a portfolio was important. So I kind of threw one together on Wix. But it just didn't feel um, professional to me. So I was like, oh, I don't know. I just was kind of trying to weave my way through it just by following different people on LinkedIn, looking at different articles, but I really needed like a structured kind of program. And that's why when I started seeing, I don't know how you first popped up. I don't know if it was, I think it was a LinkedIn post, but I don't know if I listened to your podcast first or I 
just saw your LinkedIn. I don't know, but I just saw that you had idle courses and I was like, that is what I need. I need a more structured environment um, where it kind of lists everything and gives you different resources. I knew I needed that piece of it. And then of course, doing the LinkedIn learning courses, um, you know, to learn how to do some of the authoring tools as well is kind of what I did. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. I mean, it sounds like you started, you know, doing exactly what you should do, you know, finding out, you know, all the research and determining if this is like really what you want to get into and if it matches like some of your core skills that you already have. So that, I mean, that makes so much sense. And so um, the thing that you haven't met, are you allowed to mention the job that you got as an instructional designer? I mean, I don't know if you are allowed to mention the company or could you say what your title is or where you're sure, working? Sure, I'll say the title. Um, I will, they call it a digital analyst, but it's essentially a structural designer and it'll be for a mortgage company. Okay, and so do you have a team or what does your new role look like? So it's your pretty much average instructional design role where you'll do everything from the beginning, from the needs analysis all the way through evaluation. Um, it's my role would be mostly focused on developing the e-learning piece, maybe a little bit of instructor led training, but it'll mostly be kind of the digital side. So mostly e-learning. So probably like an e-learning specialist. Oh, wonderful. And so now you have to take us through, so you signed up with the June 2020 cohort and just take us through like what you did and um, kind of your experience in the academy and how long it took you to start getting recalls for interviews. Okay. So yeah, sign up in June, 2020. Um, I already had a portfolio. So some of the main, I already had assets for the portfolio because I already had a portfolio. So a lot of that work was already done um, over the past few months. So in the academy, for anybody that wants to know, um, they provide kind of like a shell for a website. Um, and it's very professional. It looks a lot better if you want to use that option. So I used that option, um, decided to purchase the domain and get a little bit more serious with it. Um, and so I was actually not planning right away to look for a job. I was going to wait until around the first of the year just because, you know, with the virus and, you know, with the economy and all of the changes, I was thinking it would probably be better to start looking um, towards the end of the year because a lot of people transition out and, you know, they come back from the holidays or whatever. And I, but I did update my LinkedIn. So I did put the new portfolio on my LinkedIn and I was kind of looking at jobs and I would apply for a couple of jobs here and there, but mostly to get interview experience. I wasn't necessarily looking to like make a full leap into like 2021, early 2021. So just being on LinkedIn, connecting with people and um, the organization, they reached out. One of the people reached out after I connected with them and just, it was like, I saw your portfolio and you have such a catchy logo and a catchy name. And I was like, you know, that's great to know because I mean, when you create stuff like that, you want people to be like, oh, they've caught my eye. So I was like, well, at least that part worked. And that she was just talking to me about the position and it kind of moved fast. It was kind of a probably not your average process because I started um, with kind of the top person over learning and development and then kind of went down. I didn't have to go through like recruiters and apply for the particular position. So I had one of those unique um, situations that, you know, most of us would like to have where we don't have to go through like the ATS and, you know, hope that it works. You know, somebody kind of, you make the connection on LinkedIn. So yeah, I would say LinkedIn probably helped. And then of course, being able to update my portfolio and, and take some of the advice um, from the idle courses on how to kind of optimize your LinkedIn a little bit better, you know, adding some more keywords just so I can get a little bit more um, views and hits um, from L and D professionals. That's incredible. And so we have to describe this uh, logo of yours because I mean, it really is eye catching. And so um, why don't you describe it and tell us like what your website is so people can go check it out. Okay, so I decided on the learning queen as kind of my title. And so 
I it took me a, a little bit of time to come up with the name, but I wanted to make sure that it was kind of fun and catchy because I feel like I'm kind of fun. And I like glitter and I like gold. And so I knew some way I could make a logo. And I told the person, I was like, I just need somewhere in my logo to have some glitter. And because it, you know, I'm the queen, I was like, and I wanted to have a crown. And so they came up with the logo. And I love it just because it's just cute. It's like, you know, it's like make you feel like a woman and it's all kind of sparkly, but not too sparkly. Um, so if you want to check it out, it's the learning queen.com. Um, and so I just feel like it's a good representation. I like to learn, um, you know, and I just thought it was fun. It is so fun. I also am a huge fan of glitter and gold. I love glitter. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm also kind of jealous, you know, that you get to be called queen because that also is a wish of mine. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all your wishes are coming true. Yeah. And so um, through this whole process, Veronica, I mean, you, you started a year ago, you started working on the thing, then you came to the academy, you like moved your entire portfolio over, you started getting feedback, you created a new logo. And I optimized your LinkedIn and it just kind of happened for you. What do you think you would tell other new instructional designers about just like kind of your best advice now that you've gone through the journey just so recently? What's kind of the advice you'd give them as far as making that transition? That would be my first question. What's, what's your advice there? I think uh, my advice would be to understand that the no's that you get are good for you in the sense of like I've been you know I've applied for jobs before and I've been you know gotten a rejection letter and then you know you might be scrolling through LinkedIn a you know a few months later and you see that maybe that company had mass layoffs or you run into somebody that works at their company and they hate it there you know so a lot of times um when people tell you no it's for your own good and I believe that you know whatever is for you will be for you. And I know it's hard to hear that while you're waiting because I'm not a patient person by any means. I'm pretty impatient. So I used to hate when people say like, Oh, if it's, if it's meant for you, it'll be for you. But that is truly the case. Like if something is meant for you, it'll, it will come together. And a lot of times when you talk to people and they talk about like how they make the transition or how the job works, like it just all comes together it kind of just marries together really well. And that's how you kind of know that this must be meant for me. So for anybody just going through the process, keep, you know, pushing through, keep getting your assets together, you know, listen to podcasts, you know, do the research, but know that the job that's meant for you specifically will happen for you. It may take some time, but you want it to be right. Because when you make that transition for the first time, you don't want to just take any position and then hate it. Because, you know, it might taint how you feel about the field, you know, depending on where you work. So definitely just kind of keep the faith in your patience um, through the process and it will pay off. Oh, I love that advice. I think that's so true, right? Because like, you know, there's so many times it's a steep learning curve. I'm sure you'd probably agree. Mm -hmm. just making that transition, all the things that you got to learn just to get your assets together and your portfolio and your, your resume and all those other kinds of things. So um, if anybody um, is considering joining the Idle Courses Academy, what would you tell them? I would definitely tell people to make the investment um, in yourself. It's a good opportunity because it's a cohort style so you have other people that are going through the process with you um and if you're not a lot of some people are not really into like oh i want to put post my stuff out there for the world to see um i would definitely say that you know dr robin you've been very great about if someone private messages you you're always you're responsive um and you have coaches as well that are very responsive and willing to work with you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one if you may be a little shy or apprehensive about, you know, putting yourself all the way out there in the cohort style. But um, our Facebook group was great, you know, getting a chance to have that opportunity to join the Facebook group and um, kind of see other people's assets and just see what people are creating. It really inspires me um, just to see like, oh, you know, it's really cool what someone is doing and 
being able to maybe utilize that as you create learning materials and just the information in general provided in the idle courses you can go at your own pace which I think is important because we're all at different kind of journeys of our life. So you can, you know, go as fast and as slow as you would like. You have lifetime access. There's a lot of downloads that you have. There's so many materials. It's crazy, which is in a good way. Um, so I would definitely say do just make the investment and go for it. It's a great experience. Um, and just great information that I don't think you would really be able to get anywhere else. It's practical material and i mean we do talk about learning theories there's a section where you can learn about the different learning theories and you know what you need to apply but it's also a lot of hands-on practical knowledge and i think that's the most important thing that you need when you make that transition is you've been able to practice you know there's always assignments and things that you can do where you can practice your skills so definitely say make the investment and go for it okay last question this is Oh, this has been so much fun. So the last question I have for you, Veronica, is um, have you started your job yet? Um, no, I start in on Monday. So six days. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So six days. Okay. Cause I was going to ask you like, what is going to, what was the thing that surprised you the most, but I can't ask you that till later. Um, and so I guess my last question for you would be, um, how did you celebrate landing your job? Uh, so I went and got some dessert because I love sweets. So I went and treat, treated myself to some ice cream. There you go. What flavor? I love cookies and cream. So anything like cookies and cream or some kind of Oreo, that is my favorite ice cream. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on and just sharing your journey with us. And I know that you have probably inspired so many people, even just with your advice of like what's meant for you will be for you. And it's so true and I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. You can find the show notes for this episode at idlecourses.com. If you like this podcast and you wanna become an instructional designer and online learning developer, join me in the Idle Courses Academy where you'll learn to build all the assets you need to land your first instructional design job early access to this podcast, tutorials for how to use the e-learning authoring tools, templates for everything course building, and paid instructional design experience opportunities. Go to idlecourses.com forward slash academy and enroll or get on the wait list. Now get out there and build transcendent courses.